Friday at Pizza Flicks. In 1961, Edward L. Kahn directed 11 films. This one is set in the Old West, but the story harkens back to the Old Testament, brother against brother. One a gunslinger aiming to go straight, the other an outlaw who's bad to the bone. Garvey? Yeah. What'll it be? Right. Where's Landon? I don't think he's expecting you, Mr. Garvey. <laughs> he's never expecting me. You go tell him I want to see him. Yes, sir. You looking for me, Garvey? Yeah. What are you doing in town? Is that a question of you telling me? I was only asking. Oh, well, in that case, I got some news for you. Follow me to my office. There it is. Two weeks take. The hotel, the saloon, and the games. Now, are you satisfied with the count? <laughs> the count's all right. I gotta take your word for the take. There are the books. You're welcome to look them over. Books? <laughs> I got easier ways of protecting my interests. Your interests. Your interests. You blackmailed yourself into everything I own. At least don't insult my intelligence. All right. There's your 30%. Take it and get out of here. My partner. How you talk. I told you I had some news for you. The 30% is for you. The 70% is for me. That's my cut from now on. Just a minute. If you think I'm going to stand still for a shakedown like that, you're crazy. <laughs> now, you wouldn't want me to take your 30% too, would you? Now, you just stick to business, Landon. You'll live longer. All right, Ike. I can't badly on these terms. You're calling the rules. Try and remember that, huh? Now, what about that Wells Fargo job? I'll know all about it Thursday. Come in, ma'am. I'll give you the information. <laughs> you better practice with this. The older you get, the slower you get. You get too slow, you're not going to get much older. Come up to my office. A 
Now, Dixon, are you and your boys ready to do that job tonight? We got word to him at the prison. We're not figuring on trouble. All right. I'll be waiting at the mine shack. Telegraph will be notifying every town in the territory. You better toss that fire, Dixon. <laughs> Take it easy, man. There's no hurry. Oak and Callaway took care of the telegraph wire. We cut the wire in three places. <laughs> Here. Two years I've been naked without this. Okay, Dixon, what's the next move? A long ride. We're meeting George Lannan at the old snakeskin mine outside of Tombstone. Lannan set up this breakout? He's got a deal for us. Well, he must want me pretty bad to go to all this trouble. <laughs> you boys stay here for lookouts. Sit down, sit I suppose you're wondering why I had you sprung, huh? Yeah. I never figured anybody thought enough of old Matt to worry whether or not he rotted in jail. <laughs> I, uh, I thank you, George. You know, you could thank me in a different way and uh, cut yourself a slice of half a million dollars besides. <whistles> what are you figuring on doing, robbing the whole Denver Mint? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you the details, Matt. Just as soon as you tell me that your brother Billy will ride with you. Well, what do we need Billy for? He didn't get his reputation for nothing. This job takes brains. Billy's got him. You, uh, you talked to him? Didn't do any good trying to be an honest rancher, along with that son of yours. Yeah, so I hear. Well, uh, what makes you think he's going to listen to me? I sort of figure that blood is thicker than good resolutions. Especially when there's a half a million in the pot. George, you know Billy's a stubborn man. I, well, I'll, I'll see what he says, but well, you know yourself, a reformed gun's worse than a reformed drunk. <laughs> well, it's up to you, man. No Billy, no deal. You got till Thursday to let me know. All right. I'm sorry, Billy, but I'm only the manager of this bank, and my orders are to demand immediate settlement in full on your note. How soon's immediate? Closing time today, 3 o'clock. Well, it's taken me and my kid nephew two years of hard sledding to get together our first calf crop. Another 60 days, they'd sell for enough to pay off that note and even show a profit. Enough to fix the place up some and, and get married. I know, Billy. Wish I could help. It's out of my hands. Oh, you've been all right, Mr. Endicott. Uh, I can't raise 3600 by 3 o'clock this afternoon. Not with nothing in my hand but my hat. We know you're all through with that. You're right. Tell you what I can do. I can hold up on that note until we open for business at 9 tomorrow. Well, that might help. Uh, maybe I can find a buyer for my calves. Billy. Harrison, the auctioneer, is looking for stock. 
Why don't you see him? Yeah. Of course, he'll pluck me clean as a Sunday chicken, but, well, at least we'll have the ranch and maybe a few cows. Yes, and your courage, Billy. Now, you knock on that door before 9 o'clock tomorrow morning with Harrison's check. We'll clean the slate. Thanks, Mr. Indicott. I'll try to make it. There's only one way out. Sell the calves and start all over again. You mean we start all over? When I square myself at that bank, there won't be enough left to pay the preacher. The bank wouldn't give you an extension, and neither will I. Honey, there's nothing in sight for me but another year of tough going. I can't see any sense in dragging you through that. You need me now, Bill. Waiting won't help a thing. Besides, I'm going to sell my shop. Huh? Uh-huh. The next Sunday, you and I can get married. Oh, hon. Billy Wade's green pastures. What a way to make a living. You've been living better than me the last two years. Bed, two straw ticks and blankets. <laughs> Looks like Billy ought to be ripe after two years of this. Yeah, we still got opposition. The gal who reformed him. Yeah, she wouldn't affect me that way. Well, that was always Billy's weakness. Respect for women. Hey, Calloway, stoke up that stove and rustle up some grub. Hey, that's my kid. This is a stick-up, mister. You're sure gonna be disappointed. You're Matt Wade's boy, aren't you? Yeah. Well, your pappy's figuring on a family reunion. <laughs> Hello, Pop. Howdy, son. <laughs> oh, doggone. Say, boy, you you filled out good in the last two years. <laughs> Gee, Dad, it's... It's great to see you again. <laughs> How'd you get your parole so soon? Oh, uh, oh well, you see, I, I got a couple of pals with a lot of influence. Yeah, I want you to meet them. See, there's Mel Dixon. This is my boy, Ted. Howdy. Oh, this is Rusty Calloway. Howdy. Pleased to meet you. Is Billy gonna be happy to see you? Yeah? See, where is he, Cattle King, anyhow? Oh, he's over at the bank. What's he doing? Helping himself? <laughs> <laughs> Billy's through with that. Sure, you knew that, Mel. <laughs> oh, say, son, you got any grub around? Oh, just what's in the cupboard there. There's some beans and bacon and a little coffee. Oh, that's fine. Now, Dixon, you help Calloway rustle up something to eat. Sure. Come on, let's take a look around outside. <laughs> oh, go on inside and get yourself some grub. Oh, thanks, boss. Uh, been kind of rough, huh, son? Yeah? We got a calf crop at last. If Billy can get our bank loan extended, we... Ah, it'd take half a lifetime to turn this dry weather outfit into a good living. That ain't that bad, Pop. It's good money selling these calves to the big spreads. Ah. Uh... Listen, with you here to pitch in with us, we'll make out fine. <laughs> me turn cowpoke? <laughs> now, you ain't been figuring on that, have you, son? Billy and me both. Look, Pop, I even got our new brand all doped out. The 3W brand. Us three weights. Pretty, ain't it? Yeah, yeah, it's real pretty. Oh, I, I've been thinking about you, too, son. Over there at Yuma, I, I made something for you for my spare time. What little you get working on a rock pile. Hey, hey that's something. A little big for a pants belt. No, no, that's supposed to be for your gun belt. Well, you still got one, haven't you? Sure. The one you gave me, I don't pack it around. 
Well, Billy don't like it, huh? Just nothing around here to shoot but coyotes. Been uh, keeping up my practice, though, just for fun. Bet I can not draw you, Pop. Ah, uh, no. No bet. <laughs> I'm rusty as a hoop on a well bucket. <laughs> but uh, how's your draw stack up against Billy? Well, I wouldn't know. Uncle Billy won't even talk about gunplay. Bad as that, huh? Yeah. You just wait till he hears what I come here to tell you. It looks like you're not going to have long to wait. Hello, Billy. Hello, Matt. Are you surprised? <laughs> yeah. How'd you get out so soon? They gave Papa parole. Ain't that swell? So that's what you told him. All right, so I went over the wall. So what? Dad, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> no sense worrying you about it, son. If you have any real feeling for Ted there, you'll go back, finish that stretch, then hang up your gun like I did. And you're welcome here with Ted and me as long as you like. Well, I, I couldn't backtrack if I wanted to, Billy. They'd hang me. See, I had to knife this guard getting away. Well, that's a payoff, Matt. Now you're on the run for fair, with no place to go. Well, uh, there's always Canada, if you'll help me make it. We'll both help you, Dad. There's nothing we can do. Now, that's where you're wrong, Billy. Now, look, there's this big deal just waiting for us over there at Tombstone. I want no part of it. Listen, it's all set up for us, a half-million-dollar touch. Well, you know, with our, with our end of the deal, we could buy ourselves a big spread up there in Canada. A real ranch, kid, with, with grass and running water. You what still know, Matt. Ted, uh, Arlene and me, well, we're getting married Sunday. Then the bank gave us more time? No, uh, I had to sell our calves and half the cows. And I got to be knocking on that bank door before 9 in the morning with Harrison's check in my hand. It puts us right back where we started, don't it? Yeah, just about. Arlene's throwing in with us, though. We'll make out. Well, son, I... I guess Billy has the right idea. All right, boys, get the horses. What about your deal, Dad? I just have to forget it. It's no good if uh, Bill doesn't go. Where are you going to be? Now, look, don't you worry about your old man. I'll get by. We've got to hang out over there near Tombstone. You know that old abandoned shack at the snakeskin mine? I'll, uh, I'll think of something. Uh, so long, you uh, cattle kings. See you in church. I guess that washes up the landing deal, huh? Think I'm giving up that kind of money that easy? Well, Matt didn't leave all his senses in jail. Billy, can't you do something to help him? There's nothing we can do to help him. He's gonna sleep with his boots on and his horse saddle for the rest of his life. Come on, kid. Time for job. Card, spade, big and little casino. That's ten bucks you owe me, Callaway. Oh, he is right. Man, Lantern ain't gonna wait forever. What are we doing stalling around here? You ain't gonna change your brother's mind. You're right, Dixon. I'm not gonna change Billy's mind. Somebody else will. Somebody like who? The manager of the bank. Have you been drinking? <laughs> We're gonna frame Billy into joining us knock off a little uh, pocket money on the side. This is as neat a double cross as I ever pulled. Takes in a lot of territory. Tomorrow morning, Billy's gonna be knocking at that bank door before opening time. When they open the door for him, they'll be opening it for us. What's the hardware for, kid? I'm going to join Dad and help him get out of the country. You're asking for a lot of trouble. Well, you wouldn't help him, so I reckon it's up to me. You know what the Lord say about it. I don't care. He's my father. That comes first with me. Go ahead, if that's the way you feel. 
Nobody's stopping you. Kid, I'm gonna miss you around here. I'll uh, round up those calves for Harrison before I leave. Thanks. Looks like he's got a check. Let him in. Morning, Billy. Freeze. Fill it up. You won't be needing that check now, Billy. I didn't think you'd cross your own son. Ted, I'm thinking about I'm gonna set him up for life. Now, you'll set him up all right. In a prison yard where the other con's watching you hang. Shut up. Get on your horse. Did Billy Wade plan this? <laughs> Mr. Billy was right in the middle all the time. He asked me to extend his fondest regards to you. He says you're welcome to the cows. And the ranch. buy a ticket to this show? This is strictly weight business. I'll catch up with you. Go on. Howdy, Ted. Your father will be here soon. Thanks, Mr. Dixon. I'll be joining up with you fellas to help get Dad out of the country. Come on now, Billy, don't be such a sore head. You've been framed before. Not by a brother. Well, this, uh, this Wells Fargo job's just too big to, to let slide. I had to get you in with us. You think you fixed it so I can't square myself at the bank, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Well, that was a general idea. <laughs> Maybe you did. But I'm going back to find out. No, Billy. I, I can't let you go back now. Either we go on together or I go on alone. You don't leave me much choice, do you? All right, let's ride. No! for the gun. It went off accidental. 
Matt frame me at the bank, then force me out here with a gun in my back. You believe me, don't you? I don't know what to believe. I'm telling you the truth, kid. Maybe. But you hated Dad. You wouldn't help him. This could have been your way out. You're all wrong, Ted. Someday you'll know it. Come on, Ted. Let's take him back to the ranch and at least give him a decent burial. Never mind. I'll take care of him. Okay. I'm going into town and try to square that frame up. And if I do, there'll still be the ranch for us. No, thanks. Dad's pal's got a right to know what happened to him. Stay away from him, son. They're poison. I'll do my own thinking from now on. Come back. Wade. Endicott, I want you to know what happened. I already know enough. Put your hands up, Wade. You gotta listen to me. I was framed this morning. You think I'd come back here if I had any part in that hold up? Could be a slick trick to cover up your part in it. Pull it. Give him a chance, man. He says he's in it. Ah, he's had his chance. Drag him off, boy. Just wait. Better not interfere. going to stand trial. What? Trial for a Wade? If he's got it coming, the law will hang him. Cut him loose, Pete. country like a fox. You suppose he's on the level about being framed by Matt? It's going to be hard proving that now. That's all there is. Now Ted's upset enough to do something crazy. Like becoming an outlaw himself. If Ted tells that gang you shot Matt, they'll kill you on sight, Bill. Uh, not if they need me. You mean you're going to join them? Well, well honey, uh, it's the only way I know of getting Ted away from him. And it might be a way of clearing myself with the law. By getting involved in a robbery? No, by getting evidence on him and turning him over to the marshal. Bill. I've tried so hard to make people forget what you were.
hoped you'd never be needing this when you gave it to me to put away for you. But I guess there isn't much choice now. Thanks, honey. Now, you get over to Sam Jennings and tell him what I plan to do. And try to make him believe if you can. I'll try. Bill. Oh. Sort of puts a damper on our wedding again, doesn't it? I'm used to that. Extension granted. for helping me bury Dad. That's all right, kid. That was a drag gulch if I know Billy Wade. Well, he said it was an accident. <laughs> Billy Wade killed somebody by accident. Neither one of you believe it, do you? Do you? I wouldn't worry about it, kid. Billy Wade's in town without his guns. You're square with him by now. They'd have hung him for sure. That's right. And there goes our big deal, too. Without Billy Wade, it's cold. I'm a Wade. <laughs> You're the wrong kind of Wade for this deal, kid. The big shot wouldn't even talk to Matt. Everybody relax. I'm here on business. <laughs> there's business and there's business, Billy. What's yours? I'm taking over the Wells Fargo job. Kind of made up your mind kind of sudden like, didn't you? Matt changed it for me. And it stays changed. That why you killed him? Matt had to go. He just out of jail and red hot. No outfit was safe with him in it. When a man's no good anymore, you get rid of him. You lying murderer. You told me Dad's killing was an accident. Oh, kid. You want to live a little bit longer, don't you? All right, Billy. Let's go inside and talk it over. Hulk, break out that bottle we've been saving. This calls for a celebration. What are you hanging around for? He's joined our outfit, Billy. Better get on his horse while he's still able. Or what? I'll give the kid a break, Billy. <laughs> Besides, we need all the guns we can get. He wants to take Matt's place. Yeah? Well, he'll take Matt's place sure enough. If he doesn't see things my way. All right, give me the setup. Who's the man back of this deal? He's an old friend of yours. Name's Landon. George Landon? What's he doing with a half a million dollar take? He was a ten horn tip off man when I rode with Ike Garvey. <laughs> well, right now he happens to own half a tombstone. And you're the only man he'll talk to. All right, I'll go talk to him. Oh, wait a minute, Billy. As hot as you are, maybe we better get him to come up here, huh? Not enough time. This is as big as he says, it'll take time to organize it. Just as you say. Yeah, and that's the way it's got to be. I'm running this job, and I'm ready to back it up at any time. And that goes for you double. There can't be a weak link in an outfit like this. I think you'd better get on your horse and get going. I'm staying in. Look, this job is too big for a punk kid. Get going. Not until I settle my score with you. Pick up your gun. Pick up your gun! Yeah.
expecting me? Well, yes and no. I uh, wasn't sure you listened to reason. <laughs> Boys tell me you have something too big to pass up. That's right, Millie. Oh, uh, sit down, sit down. Pour yourself a drink. They're talking about a half million in cash. That kind of money doesn't lie around loose. No, not very often, Billy. Just once in a while, when they run short of cash around here and the bank has a big shipment sent from the Federal Reserve in San Francisco. Yeah, I remember those halls. Those Wells Fargo Express wagons from Benton. 20 shotgun and rifle guards. Oh, uh, they only use six guards now, Billy, since you retired. <laughs> now, but uh, that part of it isn't your job. I got an old friend of yours who's gonna do all the rough work. Ike Garvey. Is he still working for you? He's almost got me working for him. I want him out of my hair. You can buy that for a lot less than a half million. Uh, you got the wrong boy, George. You know, I don't sell gunplay. Wait, wait, wait a minute. <laughs> It just so happens that Ike is gunning for you. Could call it uh, self-defense, couldn't you? <laughs> the same old double-crossing rats you always were. <laughs> All right, George, what's the pitch? Now, Garvey's going to jump the Benton Express Friday morning. Then after uh, Garvey does the stick-up, then I hijack Garvey, that it? That's right. Oh, and uh, you can pick your own spot for both operations. Well, isn't Ike all set? Mm, no, I have uh, been sort of holding out on him, hoping that you'd show up. Now, he's coming in for the details in Thursday afternoon. There's only one spot between here and Benton. Yeah? Red Canyon. Uh, plenty of cover for Garvey first, mm -hmm. for us after. All right. That's the way I'll set it up with Ike. How'll I know for sure? I'll meet you at uh, Salt Creek after I talk with Garvey. So do you. Oh, uh, Billy, don't forget about Garvey, huh? He calls himself my silent partner. Let's make that a fact. If I know Ike, he won't let me forget it. So long, George. <laughs> Somehow, I sure hate to ship these notices out on Bill Wade. What do you want to do? Wait till he's rounded up a whole gang? Stand there. Keep your hands still. Are you crazy coming in here like this? I'll put this away if you two will let me talk. Arlene told us your story, Bill. Have you got anything to add to it? I've joined Matt's old outfit. But delivering them to you and squaring myself like I promised. Well, it's going to take more from you than just listening. Well, maybe you'd better let us decide that. How'd you like to pin something on Ike Garvey? I've been trying to get a federal case against him for three years. Well, that currency shipment from Frisco. Uh, as U.S. Marshal, that's your lookout, isn't it? Well, as Fargo guards them, but it sure becomes my business if they're monkeyed with. Well, Garvey's going to try for that shipment Friday morning. Well, how does he, or you for that matter, know the day? Those shipments are secret stuff. George Landon's setting it up. Oh, you're out of your head. George Landon's a respectable citizen in a fair way to own half a tombstone. He just hired me to double-cross Garvey and split 50-50 with him. It's hard to believe. All right, what's the rest of it? Well, get a posse together and hide out in Red Canyon Friday before daylight. Then when Garvey makes his move, you'll catch his outfit red-handed. I'll deliver mine. All right, Billy. You'll get more from us than just listening. We'll be there. See you Friday morning. Ted. Ted Wade. Excuse me, Arlene, I'm kind of in a hurry. But I've got to talk to you. If it's about Billy, I ain't got nothing to say. I know what you believe about him, but it isn't true. 
He's got you fooled just like he had me. Well, I'm through with him. And everybody around him. Ted Wade, aren't you? Billy Wade's nephew? Yeah, what of it? Well, ain't you taking chances showing up in town with the law hot after Billy for that bank stick up? I had nothing to do with that. I don't want nothing to do with him. See that kid over there sitting by himself? Young buckaroo making faces at his beard? That's the Wade boy. No. Well, so it is. All crowed up. Spoke like he's poison on his Uncle Billy. Well, anybody that feels like that is a friend of mine. Or ought to be. You're looking kind of glum, son. What's it to you? <laughs> I'm just being friendly, like. You're Matt Wade's boy, huh? Yeah. Why? Well, I'm an old friend of your family, especially an old friend of your Uncle Billy. Well, that ain't no recommendation to me. Why, I heard you two were living like brothers on a little spread over across the ridge there. That's over. We split up. Oh, no, that's too bad. When'd you last see Billy? Yesterday. He's here in Tombstone. Here in Tombstone? He doesn't even come to see any of his old friends like me or, or Landon or... What do you know about Landon? <laughs> Billy and him, a lot of business together? They still do. No kidding. I suppose Billy and George are going partners on... Cattle or ranching or... What are you so interested for? What's your name, anyway? Well, like I said, old friend, Ike Garvey. Garvey? <laughs> that name give you kind of a jolt, huh, son? Ah, uh, forget it. I knew Billy'd be gunning for me once he broke loose. Billy's got an old score to settle with me. Well, if I see him first, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Better be kind of foolish, wouldn't it, son? Right here under the marshal's nose. Don't be in such a hurry. Here you go. I got an idea. Yeah? Yeah. How would you like a job pushing cows on my spread? Huh? Just roping, riding, and branding. Strictly legitimate. Well, if you mean just that, I'd like it fine, Mr. Garvey. <laughs> You're hired, son. Hey! Yeah? Bring a fresh beer over for young Wade here. He's riding with us. Excuse me, boy. I, uh... A little business with that partner of mine upstairs. I'll talk to the tenderfoot clerk. In about a minute, talk good and loud. Got you, boss. Oh. It's you, Gary. Yeah. You expecting somebody else? No. Nobody in particular. Well. How are things going? Just came from the bank. The shipment is coming through on the Benton Express tomorrow. Morning or afternoon? Morning. How many guards? Two Wells Fargo rifles in the wagon, four riding escort. No, that's too many to take on the run. We'll have to get them from ambush. Yes, uh, that's sort of the way I figured it. 
I think Red Canyon would be the best part for it. Yeah, Red Canyon. It's a lot of cover there. Used to a successful operation. <laughs> Mine or Billy Wade's? <clears throat> like what? What myth are you talking about? Well, there's a Wade downstairs. Matt Wade's boy. I, I just got through talking to him. Billy Wade was in here yesterday. Oh, that. Well, did I help that? No, he just came in to see if I could throw something his way, is all. <laughs> so you threw me to him. Well, Ike, why would I want to do a thing like that? Because it's exactly what I'd do if I wanted to get rid of you. Oh, Ike, listen, you're talking nonsense. Probably, but I'm dissolving this partnership. <laughs> man up here. Please, Marshal, I, I'm scared to tell you. Nobody will know from us. Now tell us. It was Ike Garvey. You can go. This kind of backs up Billy's story. Looks like Garvey killed Landon so he'd have nobody to split with. You think he'll still go through with it? I don't know, Pete. I'd like to hear from Billy Wade. He'd know more than we will. We better go to the office. Landon's late. He'll be along in a minute. Look, this is how the deal with Garvey stacks up. He and his boys will do the rough work on the Wells Fargo guards. Then we step in. Yeah, but at that, it's no light order, Billy. Don't forget, Ike Garvey's got a half a dozen of the best guns in Arizona. Well, I'm not aiming for us to meet head on. It's Landon. He's dead. Say, I Garvey shot him. We better head back into town and find out what this is all about. Who is it? Billy. I only got a minute, honey. Now, what do you know about Landon being killed? Everyone in town says I Garvey did it. Bound to happen someday, but I didn't figure so soon. Billy, there's something else. Ted was in town today. What on earth happened to make him so bitter? Well, I had to slap his ears down and kick him out of the gang to keep him out of trouble. I'm afraid it didn't work. Ted rode out of town with Ike Garvey. Ted with Garvey? Mm -hmm. I never figured the kid would do that. Well, either Ted's a fool or Garvey's smarter than I thought. Get to Sam Jennings. Tell him Red Canyon still goes. Nothing's changed. You understand? Uh -huh. All right, honey. Don't worry. We'll still keep that Sunday wedding date. Hi, Billy. What's new with the Wells Fargo deal? We got to alter our plans. Well, what happened? Matt's boy. I never thought he was skunk enough to squeal on us. That kind of washes up our big deal, huh? No chance to hijack Garvey now. He'll be waiting for us. Yeah, I'm thinking we shouldn't disappoint him. What are you getting at? We're riding over to Garvey's in the morning and declaring ourselves in on that stick-up. Garvey and his gun hands won't stand for that. Look, he knows enough to see that he's better off with us than against us. All right. You're giving the orders.
Well, your last chance to pull out. So say you're safe, one at a time. That breakfast bacon sure smells good to me. Well, anybody can dine, Ben. Couldn't have a prettier day for it. Okay, I'll lead you in. It's a risky job, Hank, with Billy Wade and his bunch riding around loose, but the stakes are too high to let that stop us. Well, if we knew where Billy's outfit was, we could clean them up first. Ah, there isn't time. Three hours from now, and not at all. The horses are all settled, Mr. Garvey. Fine, kid. See what's happening to breakfast, will you? Hey, four riders coming in. It's Billy. Billy Wade. Follow me. Spread out. Close enough, Billy. Start talking. I'll give it to you fast, Ike. I'm counting myself in. In what? A hole in Boot Hill? We got no time to wrangle. Let's take that half million dollar express wagon, settle our personal dispute afterwards. We're two to your one, Billy. We can settle it now. No argument but you wouldn't have enough men left to stick up a Sunday school. Maybe you got something there. I know Mel Dixon, but those other two, they worth a cut of the melon? Calloway and Hope. My brother Matt thought well enough of them. And our four guns make the job a cinch. <laughs> Billy, the gall you got making me a proposition. What's the man says? Shake hands now, and wind up fighting. That suits me fine. Well, come on in, Stoker. Where'd you pick him up? Kid Wade? He's riding with us. I don't like riding with double crosses. Well, this time you'll have to. Rock Canyon. I figured you'd take your boys and come in behind the express. The rest of us will meet them head on in the canyon. I got a better idea. We'll hit those Wells Fargo boys while they're changing horses at Volquilas, four miles up the road. Uh, have we got time to make it? Just right for the noon stop. We'll hit them while they're inside having coffee and chow. All right, we can try it. Take half the posse across the road, and I'll keep the others here. Okay, but you're putting a lot of faith in Billy Wade. Billy's got a lot to lose. Now get going. Right. And keep everybody out of sight. You see, Billy, there's plenty of time. The express ain't in yet. Yeah, I gotta hand it to you, Ike. 
Uh, say, uh, how'd you like me and my bunch to take the tough end? How do you figure? Well, when they roll in, the guards go to chow. Your outfit pins them down inside. We rush the wagon, hit you up and go. That sounds good. You get your bunch together. At your whistle, we'll come in. All right. I'll drive the team. Gets those horses hitched, you jump in that driver's seat and head for the hills. Wade ain't gonna like that. If he has any objection, you know what to do. Kid! When we get down there, you scatter those guards' horses. Right. Giving us the double cross. Let's go. Like Billy meant to double cross you as well as us. But where was he figuring on going with the loot? He was headed straight for Red Canyon. Hustle up that hitch. Hey. 
Where are we headed? Over by Indian Springs, across that next ridge. What's left? Yeah. Two dead, three wounded back in Bagalis. Who led this massacre? The Garveys and Billy Wade. Together? The Garveys turned us down at the station. Billy drove away in the wagon. A real Wade rat race. Set us up in the canyon and join in with Garvey. Yeah. It sure looks like I backed the wrong rat. There are the tracks, Sam. You fellas want in on this? We'd better stick with this end of it. Okay. <laughs> Thinking the same thing I am? How's that, Ike? Well, there's enough there to make five men comfortable for life, or one man mighty rich. Well, Callaway and I will be satisfied with our half. <laughs> will you listen to the man? Well, that was a deal, wasn't it? Half for the survivors of your outfit and half for Billy's. Well, that's nice thinking, Dixon. Hoke and Billy died and left you two. A quarter of a million. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, nothing, if you can get away with it. But maybe Billy would like to leave his share to Kid Wade here. You four can have it all. It's got too much blood on it for me. Hold it just as you are. Or well, there'll be more blood on it. Let me draw, Billy. We can get all the loot for ourselves. Nobody gets any of it but the tombstone bank. That's where I was heading. That's what I meant all along. I smelled it. Billy Wade turned lawman. That Red Canyon set up as a trap. That's right, Garvey. And Sam Jennings will be well on his way here by now. <laughs> Anybody else want to try it? Got to hand it to you, Billy. You know, Piker, you picked yourself a big job. Stop talking and drop those gun belts. You first, Ike. <laughs> Indian Springs. <laughs> Harvey, can you hear me? I hear you. Listen close, all of you. I'm covering the money on your horses, and I can keep them covered till the marshal gets here. I don't go for that marshal talk. You want all the loot for yourself. Think what you want. Anybody that doesn't want to hang, step out and get shot. 
That go for Kid Wade, too. That goes for him special. You work your way up around behind him. When you come out, you'll be sure you come out shooting. that call of mine would smoke you out, Ted. Turn around, Billy. I don't want to shoot you in the back. You're a fool, Ted. Garvey's only waiting to get you after you finish me. You can't tell me that. Garvey's my friend. Yeah? Just step out there and throw a bullet into the ground close to me. Then throw yourself down fast. Pluck chicken. Much obliged. Give my regards to Bill Wade. Honor among thieves. Dixon? Is that you, Ike? Yeah. Looks like there's only the two of us left. Well, that figures. What do we do now? You come on out and start counting your half. Well, there you are, kid. You still got any notions about following cheap killers like Garvey? I don't know what to say, Billy. Can I square myself with you? You're squared. Now, look. Cover me. I'm going to try to bring Garvey in alive. We'll need a witness. Hold it just as you are. Turn around real slow and keep your hands up. Well, that was quick thinking, Billy. Come on out, Ted. That's nice to see the Wade family all cozy again. Get his gun. like Custer's last stand. Bring that money box, boys. Billy, you don't have to say anything. Leaving is best said at all. Are you hit bad? No, uh, I won't be using this arm for quite a while, though. There's a bank shipment, and the rest of the loot's on Dixon there. Well, then he's sure worth more dead than alive. All right, take him out, boys. Well, howdy, Ike. Kind of looks like you live to hang. Well, maybe it's just as well. It's got so you can't trust anybody nowadays. <laughs> Say, Billy, that arm's not going to give you an excuse not to get married Sunday, is it? No, sir. Hey, reckon I'll be the first man in the territory to go from outlaws to in-laws in one day, huh? <laughs> 